Well, hello there. Welcome to the demo tutorial scene for the color shifter. Color shifter is an add-on I've included in all of the low poly assets, and it's intended to make it easy to change the colors of the character. So as you can see here, uh, we're changing the color just by having presets that I've already set up. And then you can also change the armor. And this is all included with all of the low poly characters. So you can do this for yourself as well and customize it for yourself. So this tutorial, I'm just going to go over how this works. And at the end, I will briefly explain how to set it up from scratch if you choose to do that. So I've got the uh, lit goblin down here and an unlit goblin up here. I'm using the goblin because there are a lot of different parts on the goblin. As you can see in the mesh here, there's a whole bunch of body and armor parts. So when you first bring up the character in your project, you're going to have the textures and materials down here. You'll see this material goblin color shifter. If we look at this in the inspector. It uses the LP color uh, material and that's required for this. And there's a whole bunch of colors here and a whole bunch of other things. And you're not going to pay attention to this. This is not what you're going to actually manage yourself. Um, this one texture is our standard color ID. If we look at this on our desktop, we see that it just has a seven by seven grid. So 49 different colors. Each one can be mapped to different parts of your mesh. So if you wanted to create your own characters or your own meshes with this system, you can do use this palette right here. So that's the material here. And we've created a color shifter object. Now you can create one by going to create infinity PBR, create color shifter object. Now, as you can see here, we can look at the default inspector. There's a warning to not change things directly here. There's a whole lot here. Instead, what we're going to do is click this to open the color shifter editor. This is a special editor window. I've got it docked up here. Uh, we've got some help boxes to, to give a little bit more context. And some of these will also have tool tips that you can just hover over and look at more details as well if it's got that little symbol. One other option here is to show full data, and this is the range and the fuzziness on the shader. Uh, now these should mostly be set to 0 0.01, um, so don't change it unless you know what you're doing. The shader, by the way, is made with Amplify Shader Editor. It works in HDRP, URP, and the built-in render pipeline, and you can, of course, edit the shader if you have Amplify Shader Editor as well. So now we have our color shifter op object up here. This is the one we're edit editing, and we also have our material. So the color shifter object is going to affect the material here. And we have 49 active colors. So we're gonna leave all of those set. We also have our export path. Now you're able to export the final output and that's where we get these color sets from. And you can do that by just clicking this export as PNG button. Now when I change the selection here, you can see that not only does the information in the inspector here change, but the mesh changes itself. So these will update as you change it. So you can see the results live. And we have currently the armors are only going to be affecting the armors and the body are only going to be affecting the body. Now, if I click this show skipped colors, you'll see all the other colors that we've skipped. And when you go back to the armor here, you can see, whoop, I'm gonna collapse all there. You can see all that we're skipping all the body ones. To open one up, you just expand it. And then if I click skip this, now this will not be skipped. And if I change my output color to something crazy like that. Now when I go to armor, the body won't change there, but I can change the body here. But when I go back to color set one, the body will change as well. I'm going to skip that one. So the hide skipped colors will show and hide the colors that are skipped for any given color set. The hidden colors will show all the colors that aren't being used. So there are 49 different colors. These are not being used at all. They're marked as hidden because they're just not going to do anything for this character. And so we keep that out of the way. And finally, we're going to show the copying colors. Now, these are the actual colors. If I expand both of these, you can see all the actual colors of the 49 colors. These are all the different ones that are being used by this character. Well, if we expand these main ones, you can see the color ID color. This is something you don't want to change uh, unless you know what you're doing. And if you're using a different color I uh, ID, then you would want to change this. And, select the correct color there. This is the lookup on that color palette we looked at earlier. And this is the final output color. So in this case, this brown leather, if I were to change it, we can see it changing right there. So we can see here that this color is controlling three other controls, the armor boots, leather underside, and armor belt one. And if I click this remove link here, it will remove it. Now armor belt 
I can change to any color I want. But if I go back to this drop down and say control this, then it will change back to match whatever I have here. Now, there is another option though, just because you're being controlled doesn't mean you have to have the exact same color. Instead, when an, uh, when an item is being controlled, then you actually have a hue, saturation, and value shift. So you can change the information slightly here. And as you can see, I actually have the saturation slightly up and the value up as well for that leather. So it's going to be a, a brighter, more vibrant uh, brown than the leather accessories up here. And you can see that here, if I change the color, you can see that no matter what color I change it to, it's going to be uh, just a slightly brighter and a little bit more vibrant or saturated. So that's why you might want to show the copying colors to ad make adjustments there. Otherwise, I like to keep these uh, closed so that it's a little bit more tidy. And I know that I'm only doing these six items here. So now if I want to set up a new, a new look, all I have to do is really move these around and choose some new colors here. Maybe for the armor waist, I'll choose a nice deep purple. And for the armor itself, if I can click it for the armor itself, we can go with a sort of a bluish look. And there we go. And now we have a new armor. And now, you know, this is very bright blue. Maybe I don't want that. So if I do show the copying colors, we can see which ones are copy copying armor here. Kind of look for these. I've named these um, myself, so you can kind of see what they do. but. This is the one it looks like, so there you go. I can just bring that saturation down, maybe even bring the value down and make it a dark one. If we want to, we could even make it a different color, slight hue shift there as well. And now we have a new armor look for the character. Now you can also control this at runtime. Just add the color shift runtime component onto your mesh here. And down here, we've got some code examples. If we open up the script, you can see um, that all it's doing is call calling the color shifter object once assigned and calling set active color set or set color set, set color set by name or set a random color set. So choosing set color set with a name is a very easy way at runtime to change the entire look of the character. All right, I've duplicated the goblin because I want to demonstrate how to set this up from scratch if you were interested in doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our materials and I'm going to create a second color shifter. I'm going to call this one demo. And this is just the material. And then on this other goblin, I'm going to just add the material to all of the objects here. And then I'm going to create a new Affinity PR, create color shifter object. And we're going to call this goblin demo. And in goblin demo, we'll open that up and assign the demo material. And now we see it starts out just blue. These are all the colors and they're all unnamed. And so the, you know, I know this character has a lot of different uh, things going on here. And it looks like I missed a couple of the section there. Oh, there we go. So there's a lot going on here with this character. And so the way we go about selecting which section is which and really naming them is clicking this test button. As you can see, as we test, they're gonna turn magenta. So that makes it a little bit easier to see what's what. So we can see here that this is, I don't know what we'll call this, um, call it forearm armor, armor uh, forearm. And then we can revert that or do what we want with it. Once we're done, we can also sort by name. So you can bring the, uh, make these alphabetical. And then we can just change the output color either with this expanded or with it closed just by selecting that. And then if you know that a color isn't being used, for example, 48 isn't being used, we can just open that up and click hide this color and it goes away. Unless of course we show hidden colors, then it'll come back. There we go. That's how you set it up. We just do that for all of the colors. Now I'm not gonna redo it because I've already done it once and I'm not gonna redo it again. But I hope you understand the concept there. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, join us on the Discord, uh, and certainly give us a, a shout out on email as well. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed 
this content and would like to see more of it. Thanks very much. Have a great day.